Okay there, Pipe Bells, good morning. Yes, it's me, your host, Quentin Pipe Padre. Welcome to this new video. Yes, just got back from a run wearing my Vibram Live Fingers. It's me, Pipe Bells, how's it going? Old Hoist Book and Pipe Padre here with you again. And I'm just I'm getting back from uh, one of my two mile interval run. Yes. Gonna have a little uh, morning treat here. And I've uh, been working on a uh, 36 hour, actually going more on 40 hour fast. And uh, still doing pretty darn good for an old man. So I'm gonna just make, um, this is kind of like a, how do I say this? Hmm. I'm just gonna have fun making just kind of a, a lighthearted video today. Just kind of taking you through the day in a life of Holy Smoking Pie Padre. So stay tuned and tag along. Let's go get a cup of coffee. Okay there, Pipe Pals, let's, uh, let's go into the old uh, Caledonian uh, room, my little Scottish room, uh, and uh, we'll just kind of uh, carry on from there, and we'll continue with my little video. Mm. Uh, but first, before we do that, uh, let's go in and do some chin-ups, uh, shall we? Let's go up and do some chin-ups. Okay, I thought I'd try and do a few uh, pull-ups or chin-ups, part of my routine on Tuesdays. Here we go. And that's 10. All right, now for that cup of coffee. Okay, now that we got the chin-ups done, let's go into the in my Scottish room here. And the, what do we see on the desk? Yes, that is in all of its Mac glory, the uh, new MacBook. And as they uh, affectionately call it, the Rose Gold Edition. Okay, so I'm back, uh, Pipe Pals, and I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the MacBook new, the new MacBook 2016. They call it rose gold, but I call it, you know what I call it? Copper. That's all it is. It's just copper. I mean, check me out. That's copper, okay? You can see it. That's copper. Of course, my lighting doesn't probably do it justice, but next to the MacBook Air, the original uh, innovative micro laptop that really started this craze of, you know, super thin and light and weight. Uh, again, Steve Jobs pulled it out of one of those inner office memo uh, envelopes, which was like absolutely just <laughs> jaw dropping when he did that. And again, this is, uh, was the MacBook Air, uh, is a very revolutionary device. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well as uh, my year with the Apple Watch, one year later. Actually, it's been a year and oh, a couple of uh, weeks. So that's what I want to talk about uh, in this video, but it has something to do with, with philosophy. Uh, I would say there's a, there is a philosophical component, uh, maybe a spiritual theological component, uh, as we compare the new MacBook 16 with the uh, MacBook Air. Okay, Pipe Pals, I'm back. Uh, so I want to just compare and contrast these two Apple products. One is, uh, uh, it's, it's, its original iteration was uh, six years ago, seven years ago, 
Yeah, 2009, I remember, and that was that was quite a while ago. Hard to believe, though. It just seems like yesterday, which it is, which it was. It was yesterday, but several years ago, yesterday. Along with this new MacBook uh, 2016, the quote unquote rose gold, but really we know it's copper. It's just copper. That's all it is. Uh, but anyway, um, so uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is, uh, and I and I did my last video uh, editing exclusively on the uh, MacBook 2016. Okay, just this little job right here. And it's let me tell you, it's pretty. What's the word I want to use? Uh, seductive, I guess. Uh, when you see it in the store for the first time, even compared to the MacBook Air, which is still, which is still quite fetching, I have to say, still, still beloved in my heart, uh, that MacBook 2016 is quite an interesting piece of hardware. Again, super lightweight. You know, there's one guy who did a video who actually spins it on his finger. Don't wait for me to do that because I am not that stupid. Okay. So, as you compare these two briefly, uh, and I and I like I said I did editing on this MacBook uh, 2016 last week in my last last week's video, and but I'm going to also compare by rendering them. I'm going to do both projects on this MacBook 2016 and the MacBook Air, uh, both using Final Cut Pro, and uh, so that's what I would uh, that's what I will be doing. But just essentially, just basically, uh, what you're looking at here with the MacBook 2016, I don't know if you can see all those specs there, but it's a one point, uh, is it, what is it, a 1.1 gigahertz uh, M class uh, core um, processor. Now, you look over here at the MacBook Air and you see that it is actually a 1.4. I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry this is, this, I'm sorry, 1.1. This is 1.1. I'm sorry, Mac, uh, the MacBook 2016 1.1 processor. And then the MacBook Air is a 1.4 processor. So the original um, feeling in the tech community was that this is so underpowered. I mean, look, this MacBook Air, which is essentially, this one's like two, three years old, uh, is actually has a higher or more, more, uh, more processing speed. But actually, when you kind of factor in the RAM memory, this has eight megabytes of RAM. As opposed to the MacBook Air, you only have four. Now also, this MacBook, even though it has a 1.1 gigahertz processor, it can go a, a turbo up to 2.2, I think, which is not bad. Now, I don't know about turbo mode on this. I'm assuming it has turbo mode, but I can't tell you the exact specs. Maybe Richard T., who is one of our resident techie guys, might be able to say, oh, Padre, it's this, and tell us all, and that'll be, we'll be all amazed and, wonder, and it'll be wonderful. But uh, the thing is that... Um, so you have this newer one, which is very, very uh, alluring in its design and its, uh, you know, its compactability, even in its copper colorness. One hand lift, just about that slip there. Uh, so the thing is that, uh, and this is what gets me to my little philosophical bent uh, here in just a moment, is which really is the better machine? Because I think uh, this MacBook 16 is just maybe a shy lighter than the MacBook 11 inch MacBook Air. So what makes, uh, what makes the difference? Well, the, the allure of course is that one happens to be just a little bit newer than the other one. And sadly, the other one is old. Yes, I said the dreaded word. It's old. Okay, I'm back. And the one last thing I want to talk about tech-wise is my Apple Watch. Okay, so as you can see, there it is. Well, hold on a second. Uh, I might have to just do a freeze frame there. 
but you can get a good look at it and old Mickey is still ticking away and so um, as I look at the Apple Watch a year on you can kind of see that it's pretty much retained its uh, its uh, structural integrity there's no major you know uh, violent gashes or cracks or dents or scratches either in the case or in the lens which I'm really impressed with because I have not babied it at all I, I mean I've been when I say careful I mean you know I've been you know prudent about you know I'm not gonna go sky uh, skin diving with it you know or uh, I'm not gonna you know take a bath with it or you know dunk it underwater as I'm washing dishes things like that uh, I've knocked it on doorknobs a couple of times, you know, uh, always kind of holding my breath that I'm afraid that now I'm going to raise it to my hand. It's going to be a big crack in the uh, sapphire glass. But I got the uh, the middle range one uh, for durability, and I have to say it was a truly a good investment. The only thing about the Apple Watch that I I, I, I think is somewhat limiting and it's no big secret is that it does need to be tethered to the Apple iPhone but in the third um, installment of watch OS that's going to get more it's going to become less and less a, a necessity to have the the iPhone uh, tethered or in close proximity for data transformation and then the the second generation Apple Watch uh, they are predicting is pretty much going to be completely independent of the iPhone which will be amazing. Um, I use it every day. I was never a big watch person until I, when I was in the military I, I had to have a watch and so you know I try and go out and get all these you know rugged G-Shock kind of watches and things like that but basically I um, uh, have been a real I've been wearing it every day uh, I use it for uh, my exercise my um, my activity uh, monitor uh, and but essentially I use it for answering phone calls text messages it, it comes in so handy uh, believe it or not uh, if I'm uh, out visiting people bringing Holy Communion or anointing the sick and all of a sudden I'm at the hospital and I get a little uh, haptic on my wrist and it says oh father there's somebody else in room to so-and-so uh, they need to see a priest for anointing or confession and instead of having to drive all the way back to the parish and get the message, I'm already there on ground at the hospital and I can go from one room to another and it's just it's just awesome. It's just great. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> the bottom line is that I have to say that uh, the Apple Watch what has been a really good investment for me. Again, if you wear watches, if you're into activity monitoring, if you're doing, you know, if you if you if you need a constant communication device for phone and text messaging yeah you can take your iPhone or your or your Android and whatever but believe it or not uh, I have found this to be a great uh, aid uh, to my daily life so again I'm not trying to sell you the Apple watch but I am trying to give you an honest um, uh, uh, review of how I have uh, lived with this product for over a year and uh, probably a year and two weeks <laughs> Well, hello there, Pipe Pals. How are you all doing? Holy Smoking Pipe Andre here with you yet again. And I know some of you were probably wondering, why are you banging on about Apple products? You know, MacBooks and MacBook Airs and Apple Watches. I know I'm going to get some hate for that, but that's okay, because I love you anyway. Okay. Um, but this is a pipe video. And I am... Smoking this boot shook can, I believe it is. Yep, it's a BC. And I just love this pipe. It's so European. Hey, I love it. Look at that. Gorgeous thing. Gorgeous thing. Uh, and in it, I'm going to do a little tamp here. You do a tamp and a light. Mm. Smoking some Blackwoods Flake. So, if you go back and say, if you're out there, this one's for you, buddy. There you go. All right. And speaking of shout outs, because I was, I have some followers. You know, and I just think it's in, from time to time, 
it's important just to acknowledge people that watch your channel. I have a few people that watch. I really do. No, it's not me watching all the time. <laughs> That's not the way I do it. But, uh, but I had a couple of interesting uh, comments from some people in my last video. Um, so, uh, okay, so here, here I, I'm going to try and phonetically pronounce their names, the ones that have some interesting uh, uh, YouTube channel names. Omar Sci Sci Fi. Okay, that's S H dash S Y five Y. I think that's Sci Fi. So Omar Sci S H comma or dash Sci Fi. So thank you for watching. Uh, Grant Grindall. Grindall. Thank you for watching. Um, pipe smoking dieter. And I wanted to kind of talk, uh, mention him, pipe smoking dieter. Um, and, uh, Graham Wilson and old time Tom Piper. Uh, uh, because the three of them, uh, commented more on not so much the pipe video. They were talking about how, uh, my talk of topic on uh, fasting and intermittent fasting uh, was uh, very um, inspirational or they got something out of that portion of the video and they have uh, also been uh, attempting in their own in their own way again I'm not giving out any uh, dietary advice or medical advice none whatsoever I'm just telling you what I'm doing but uh, they were sharing with me some of their their successes in their recent weight loss so you know, uh, hoist a pipe in their honor and uh, and uh, salute them, shall we? So for their for their valiant uh, efforts and achievements, and of course my dear friend Perola, my uh, LCHF buddy there in Sweden, along with Dr. Andreas Ienfeld. Uh, let's see. I want to also say hi to Bob and Donna Reynolds. Thanks for watching and your nice comment. Of course, good old uh, tech guy Richard T. Yep, T. T for trouble, that's for sure. Uh, also, Tron77, I guess you were also have commented many on my videos. Thank you. And I don't know if you ever got that issue with your Congress person settled. Um, let's see. This one here, uh, Zyklotroid. Uh, Zyklotroid. Zyklotroid. Uh, X-I-C-L-O-T-R-O-D-E. So I'm going to say a uh, Zyklotroid. I uh, hope I pronounced that right. Uh, thank you for watching. Tony English. And uh, thanks. And I'm just saying hi to you too. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, let's see. Graham Wilson. I think we just talked about him. Oh, Irish Ali Cat. Uh, he had a little bit of a caveat for the old Padre. All that smoke's going to ruin your computers. And you're right. They will. <laughs> but you know what? I don't really smoke as much as maybe some people think I do. Uh, not to say that it makes it any better. Of course, I will say, interestingly enough, with this little guy here, there are no... <laughs> Can you imagine this is a full computer? Uh, there are no fans. There are no fans in uh, the MacBook 16. The copper edition. Yeah, copper. It's not rose gold. Rose gold! You gotta be kidding me, it's copper. Okay, so, uh, you know what? I, I need some I need some coffee. I am just too, I'm too mellow right now. I'm just too sedated. I'm too lethargic. I'm too underpowered. Okay, so um, there we have it. Uh, oh, I think I had one more, two, a couple more people. Uh, let's see, oh, uh, and last, but by no means least, our dear, Dr. Gary. Okay, so little shout outs for y'all. All right, uh, let's continue, shall we, with this video. Mm. So, um, today is my official day off, and so I went for uh, an inter interval run earlier this morning in my Vibram Five Fingers. Mm, this is good. Oh, man. And, uh, yes, today, you're probably wondering, well, what about this, this fasting thing you were talking about last time? 
Well, believe it or not, <coughs> I am uh, over 40 hours in this fast, and I'll probably break it around noon, a little bit after noon, maybe 1 o'clock. And um, I have to say that the last week where I did three uh, intervals of 36-hour plus fasting, uh, I went from 203 down to, this morning, 195. And my body fat level was at 25. And they say anything over 25 is your overweight. And it's been up around 27, 28 for the last year. It kind of would go, it would start to go down and then it would go back up and then it would go down a little bit and go back up. And I do remember that when I really lost the, the weight uh, drastically uh, two years ago, was when I started employing 36 hour fasting, intermittent fasting, or as Chris Kruger would say, real fasting. Maybe I'll move this up a little bit closer. Let's do this. There we go. Can you see me? Good. Okay. Mmm. This is this is tasty. Ah. So, um, you know, um, so 36 hour fasting and again, I, once, once you kind of get into that routine, it just becomes a way of life. And when I lost, uh, when I got down to like 175 <clears throat> two years ago from, from 270, I was trying to get down to 170 so I could say I've actually lost 100 pounds. And I think that's still my goal. Uh, but I did it for about two months, and then I started CrossFit. And I decided that I can't do CrossFit and 36-hour fasting. I still did inter intermittent fasting, still did that. My diet was a little bit more strict when I did CrossFit. So, in between the 36 hour fasting, my, my, basically the whole weight loss thing started with, with the doctor really encouraging me to take a good, long, hard look at my health and realizing that, that I had one more opportunity to turn things around. And if I didn't start, um, it wasn't gonna be good. And yes, um, when he said, you could even start running again. I thought, no way, I'm 56 years old. You know, now I'm 59 years old. And guess what? I just came back from a two mile interval run as I just started off the video with you. I feel great. And no, I, I don't feel like I'm starving. In fact, I've been looking into a lot of research about the differences between intermittent or interval uh, fasting as opposed to starvation. And there's, there's, there really are showing a lot of clinical scientific background that they're, they're totally two different things. Uh, even calorie restriction and fasting are totally different things. Ask yourself, have you ever gone on a quote unquote low calorie diet? There was a thing called the military diet. I guess it's still out there. And you can, if you do it for like a week, maybe five days, I forgot, you can lose 10 pounds. And I, and I tried that, um, oh, I think back in November before Christmas, I thought, well, maybe if I could lose 10 pounds, yeah, that'd be great. You know, and then I could, you know, go into the holidays and then if I eat, overeat, then at least I can, you know, I won't, I won't you know, where there'll be like a, okay, I'll lose it now, maybe gain a little bit of it back during the holidays and I'll be kind of break even and I'll be okay for the new year and start off in the new year. Man, I tried that thing and it just, tore me up you'd have like a piece of toast with a little bit of peanut butter on it and uh, a half an apple or something and, and or maybe a little two three four ounces of oatmeal or something i can't remember and it was just so carb heavy and within two and within an hour and a half i was ravenous i was like Argh! i mean i felt this is a good this is a good thing for me to recall when I was doing that diet, I would go and say mass, still do my walking, 
Then I'd come back and have my little bowl of oatmeal, my little half a banana. I forgot what it was. Half a piece of fruit, a little bit of oatmeal, maybe a half a piece of toast. Anyway, just something really ridiculous like that. And um, within an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes, I would be more hungry than I am right now with a 40 hour fast. I mean, I've had 40 hours right now and that's it. Just coffee, water. And now, just, just this now, just after 40 hours of it, I decided to lay up a pipe. And then I got a message from old Tom Pipe Smoker. Uh, he said that uh, he gave me his diet, which was water, coffee, and lots of pipe tobacco, I guess it was. It's kind of interesting. And I've done that before. It works. You know, the tobacco will take the edge off of your hunger for a while, too, so it's not a bad thing. But anyway, um, so anyway, I did that military diet thing, quote unquote, military diet. And I did it for just about two days. And I just, it drove me nuts, it drove me nuts. And I didn't really lose anything. I think I lost maybe three pounds, quote unquote. But um, anyway, so, but, but fasting, I guess, to be honest with you, the bottom line is it's natural. It's just it's a natural thing. It's not a, um, it's not a gimmick. Now it is a way of, I think the way Mark Sisson explains it, the way Butter Bob Briggs explains it, the way Dr. Jason Fung explains it. It's working with your body's natural, um, if you will, circadian rhythms of diet and uh, digestion, you know. I'll be honest with you, I, um, now I'm an older person, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment, because believe it or not, the opening part of this video about the new MacBook prayer, prayer new MacBook prayer, <laughs> I like that MacBook prayer, uh, the MacBook, uh, it's actually not even a MacBook Pro, it's just a MacBook, and the MacBook Air, and one being older than the other has something to do with this video. But anyway, um, so, so the thing is that it, it works with your, your body's natural uh, rhythms of, of eating, digesting, and resting. And there's a, there's a lot of wisdom in that. I mean, I used to eat big at every single meal. I mean, I would eat just large portions all the time. And, and in America, you go to a restaurant, especially after you've been fasting for a while and you've been not, uh, you've been reducing. Again, the, the, the secret for me was listening to, um, um, oh, come to me a minute. Um, uh, oh gosh, John, I said John Gallagher. Anyway, but anyway, uh, the guy who lost 400 pounds, but he, his, his big secret for me was don't eat calorically, eat nutritionally. Okay. If you eat nutritionally, that's the secret. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. If I open up a bag of potato chips or a bag of Cheetos or a bag of Doritos and I wash it down with a Mountain Dew, I'm going to eat the whole thing and I'm still gonna be hungry. Why? Is it because of those evil carbohydrates and sugar? Part of it is true, that's true, but much more, much more fundamental. Why am I gonna be hungry and ravenous an hour later after that? Even though I've eaten a huge bag of Doritos and washed it down with a 32 ouncer uh, Mountain Dew, uh, what was the one I liked? Uh, Baja Fresh or Baja whatever, I love that one, that tasted good. Why am I gonna be hungry? Because my body is going, oh, you gave me some food, um, but you didn't give me nutrition. Big difference. So if I eat, you know, say eight ounces of protein, chicken, beef, whatever, and I have a big leafy green salad with all sorts of great cruciferous vegetables, and yes, I have a little bit of butter or some um, a good, good, some good healthy fats, a little olive oil in my salad. Um, uh, so if I have 
protein, good green cruciferous vegetable carbs, and some good healthy fats. I'm getting all the macronutrients that I need. And when I, when I eat, I eat a, that, that one good meal. And it could be, I mean, that, that'll be a satisfying meal. And at the end of it, I will be satiated or I'll feel full, I'll feel satisfied. There won't be any hunger pangs and it will last for hours on end. That's the way you can tell if you're eating right. If the meal that you eat, if you can get six to eight hours, this is the key. Ask yourself, the last meal I ate, how long ago was it? How long can I go on my diet? Because if you have a good, solid, healthy diet, you can go at least, I'd say between five and eight hours before the next meal. But if you're eating processed food and lots of refined carbohydrates and sugar, you can probably go maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and then you're gonna be hungry again because your blood sugar will spike. Yeah! And then it falls. And that's when you get hungry again. And you set up that vicious cycle of eat, starve, eat, starve, eat, starve. Where if you're doing intermittent fasting, you're fasting, then you eat, then you fast again. That's the cycle. That's how that works. Okay, enough of my little dietary stuff there. I hope you got something out of that. Um, that seems to be working for me. And uh, I'm down 195 today. And, uh, and so the old body fat, fat indicator said I'm 25, not 27. So I'm like, yes. Officially, I can say I'm no longer overweight. <laughs> um, okay, let me get some uh, fat-free coffee. Mm. Although I have another little coffee tip for you all. Uh, coconut cream. Now, that probably has some 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 latent carbohydrates in there. Uh, oh, by the way, I got rid of uh, all dairy, and I got rid of my... I, I, I love mayonnaise. I, I love mayonnaise. Homemade mayonnaise is the best, but I, when I can't make it all the time, I'll still get a good dollop or two. But I've kind of said, okay, I'm even going to put that aside. So all it is now is just basic basic uh, fundamental macrobio macronutrients and the intermittent fasting. So it looks like it is now finally working again. And I'm happy about that. Um, okay, so this old and new theme I want to talk about. Real, this is what I want to end the old video with today. One of the things that I'm seeing more and more and more and more, and it's very, very distressing, discouraging, it's sad, it's upsetting even, is um, old versus new, or new versus old. I see it a lot happening in the other channels that I, uh, that I watch. I, I like watching uh, my... Uh, the cantankerous vegans, just they're just tearing each other up. You know, I have to say there's some drama. I guess I like that drama stuff. But some of it's getting a little old, though. It's just every, every, all the vegans are fighting with each other, you know. And you're not a real vegan because you wear leather. Or you're not a real vegan because, because you go to Taco Bell, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. So... The vegans are fighting amongst themselves, and then there's a few sane voices out there that are kind of on the side, kind of also laughing and kind of snickering and say, please, people, grow up. You know, try to be adult about this whole thing. But one of the things that is bothering me, and I see it happening in the vegan thing, you know, the dietary wars thing, um, politics, um, whether it's in the UK uh, or uh, here in the US now, we're in the Democratic uh, Convention uh, season now. And so we're getting close to the home stretch. The next couple months will be, you know, basically canvassing for the nominees of both parties, and there'll be, you know, name calling on each side and wonderfully delicious. Uh, you know, campaign ads uh, trouncing the other person and telling us how what a real evil person or, you know, how, how uh, you know, just, 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 just you know, the, the mudslinging is going to start, you know, the happy season starts after this. 
And believe it or not, there's a lot of, there's a lot at stake. It, and if you take it super serious, as I probably should, and I probably do, but if I took it way too serious, I'd probably go to the bridge and jump or drink some Kool-Aid. Uh, but the one thing I'm seeing over and over and over again, and this is the one that's distressing for me, and, and should be for a lot of you, because a lot of you are not, you're, some of you are younger pipe pals, you know, and there's some younger ones out there, and that's where it's all one big happy clubhouse, I hope. Despite our differences. But the thing that I'm seeing more and more is this whole thing that old people, like yours truly, and maybe you, and you, and maybe you, are, you don't have a value. You don't have really a voice anymore. It's like, you've, you've lived your life, you're getting ready to die, now it's only for young people. Only young people matter. Only young people count. So if you're an old person, <coughs> you basically need to keep your, your opinions to yourself because you're old and that disqualifies you from having a, a valid opinion. And you um, really need to step aside and let the younger generation do their thing. Now, I want to challenge that, that, that uh, thought because... When I was growing up, yeah, you know, you, you had older people. And I think I said in one of my earlier videos that I always found older people to be a, a wealth of wisdom and information. Now, not all old people are, you know, great sages and can kind of, you know, teach you a little bit about the reality of life. Maybe not, you know, tell you how to invest your 401k wisely, but, but I mean, they had experiences they, they could they could you could learn from their experiences they could see things that maybe a younger person may not even be aware of I have a dear friend who just passed away about a year ago and uh, I really really admired him I looked up to him and a few years ago I was kind of going through some difficulties and and he wasn't necessarily a, a quote-unquote religious, spiritual person, but he, he was a person who I highly respected. And I said, you know what? I'm going to ask him a couple of really hard questions about where I was at in my life and just see what he says. Because I thought, hey, wisdom and multitude of counselors. And, and uh, there was a couple of people that I was trying to determine some things. And I talked to this dear friend of mine. And you know what? I'm so grateful. that he took time to sit in his little office. He had a little home office. It's kind of a manly man kind of a guy. I just loved him. But he sat and I told him what I was going through and what he thought and if he had any recommendations. And he had some really concrete, real life, you know, good, he had, he had some good questions to ask me questions I hadn't quite asked myself and that was great I didn't see those questions but I once he went well what about this or what about that have you considered this and let me ask you where you know what are you, some of your assets that you have and things like that and I walked away from that whole uh, little sharing and I said man he kind of opened some reality for me he helped me to see some things I had not even imagined were even out there and as a result my life was better for that and and so but he was an old person and just because a person may be uh, biologically older than say a 20 year old or a 30 year old. I guess 30 year olds are kind of old now too. But the reality is that we all have a voice. We all have a re reason for being here. We have where it's we have a legitimate reason for living. And there's a sense that this younger generation is like, well, if you're a certain past a certain age, you should just go kill yourself. Look at the radical vegans. They say, if you're a meat eater, you don't deserve to live. I mean, if, if let's say veganism took over tomorrow, meat eaters would probably, those who said, I'm not going to give up eating meat, 
And they said, excuse me, we're gonna put you in a concentration camp and gas you because you don't deserve to live. And if you were an old meat eater like I am, uh, my chances wouldn't be very good, would they? Of course, this old guy can run now, so <laughs> maybe I can outrun you. <laughs> Plus, I'm crafty. You know, I'm not saying I'm the smartest, uh, the brightest bulb in the pack, but I still, I still switch on and off, so I can, I can still function. Okay. At least I can think my way out of a wet paper bag. I know I can do that. So anyway, uh, I don't know how you guys feel about that. But again, I know there's some young uh, YouTube pipers there. They're younger than me. And, and I don't think that they probably have any feelings one way or another that, oh, yeah, old people should basically shut up and die and go away. But I am seeing that more and more this attitude. Now, again, let me be let me be clear. I'm not saying that young people are militantly now marching the streets saying death to old people. I'm not saying that. But if you listen to what they say, they there's an implication there that, hey, if you're old, you need to shut up and move out of the way and basically get ready to die. And I just think, excuse me, who says that? You? Which leads me to my final point, and that is, you just need to chill out, millennials. Your precious little snowflakes. Light up a pipe. Light up your world. Life is good. Stop whining and complaining. That's all I wanted to share. Anyway, hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.